bless God, I have a short teaching and surrounding the Beatitudes and Matthew 5. Blessed are they, blessed are the. A lot of these are obvious. Pure in heart, merciful. Not to say that people don't abuse them. The first one, Matthew 5, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Okay. So what does this mean? This, to me, is of the more detailed... So I want to do a quick video on this. Certainly we know it's not poor in the flesh because poor people at most part are lost, you know, and there's also what it says in the Proverbs about the poor man that oppresses the poor, okay? And anyone that has discretion knows that just being poor does not mean you're blessed, okay? So there is someone who's poor in spirit, okay? I do believe James touches on this in the first chapter of his writing, and I'm going to read a few verses from that and then mention a few things from the Old Testament. Okay. Starting at James 1, verse 9, Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. Okay. And that talks about the rich man fading away in his ways in the next verse. Okay. So James certainly brings a strong rebuke against the rich man in the fifth chapter, which is warranted and... In like manner, though, you can be a man of substance and know what to do with it. So in that case, even a rich man is not verbatim damned, okay? But following the context of James 5, a covetous man. There was Joseph of Arimathea, who was a good man and these things. So, anyway, getting back to poor in spirit, there's a brother of low degree. Okay. Maybe some in the past have thought this is just referring to how much materials a man has had in this section. I don't see that. Okay. Myself personally, I see it's a poor in spirit, okay, and the reason why is because he is in the state of humility, and we know that before honor is humility, okay, and we know this is the truth, okay. That if you humble yourself, you shall be exalted. So the poor in spirit, this man is following a biblical humbling. Now, there's a psalm, Psalm 37, that has like sayings to the Beatitudes. In this psalm, it gives a lot of what happens to those that aren't blessed. Okay. But it does talk about inheriting the earth. Okay. And it was talking about the kingdom, okay? Because that is the Psalm 2 kingdom, okay? So the kingdom that Jesus sets up when he returns is what you have to see out of the Beatitudes, okay? You have to have it now, though. That's why you have to be poor in spirit, okay? Because you cannot later have something when you don't live it now because it's written you have to humble yourself okay god cannot do that for you he cannot force you to do this after death or something okay so there's something that comes before honor 
okay? Humility is not humility if someone forces it on you, okay? That's just not what humility is, okay? How do I know this? Because of what it says in Isaiah 66, okay? I'm going to read Isaiah 66, and there's many more things that could be said as far as what is actual humility, and there's a lot of good scriptures on this topic. Just imperative for you to know today that if you are sinning, you're not humble before God. Okay. Maybe man thinks you are. Maybe you have shreds of honesty in places in life, but you're not poor in spirit. Okay. And that means you're cursed. Okay. Isaiah 66, 1, Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath my hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Okay. So, this is a poor of contrite spirit, and this is the poor man, okay? The brother of low degree is where I would place this passage. You tremble at the word of God, okay? Now, we know if this is the man that the Lord is looking for, we know he must be contrary to what the Lord then rebukes. Okay? Because in the case, it's abominations in the third verse, and in the fourth verse, he will choose their delusions. Okay? And their fears he brings upon them. So they don't fear God. Okay? In the fifth verse, your brethren that hated you. Okay, so these are the ones that tremble at his word. Okay. So anyway, the joy is spoke of here. Okay. And what's the cursed man? What's he rebuked for here? He's rebuked for not following perfection. He's sinning. I'm just making it simple. But that's what's going on here. Again, I encourage Psalm 37 and also just the Sermon on the Mount. Once you get to, in the strictest detail at the end of the fifth chapter, how Jesus is saying you need to be like the Father. Okay. And that's action-based. There is no transfer base anyway in the Bible, but it can't be that because it's action based. Jesus relates it to how the Father is that good to even the wicked. Okay. And certainly you're not going to be that good like the Father is good if you're sinning against sinners. Okay. So, anyway, I thought I'd do this teaching. So, be poor in spirit, be saved.